on episode 587 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Thomas J. Hine and discuss his book, The Balanced Wealth Approach, Secrets to Living Long and Living Rich. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 587. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. Each week, we dive deep into health and fitness topics that affect those of us over 40. I'm Coach Allen. I'm an NASM certified personal trainer with specializations in corrective exercise, behavior change, performance enhancement, and fitness nutrition. A Precision Nutrition Level 1 coach, a FAI certified functional aging specialist, and an OTA Level 2 online trainer. Each week, I'm joined by our co-host, Coach Rachel. She is an NASM certified personal trainer and a RRCA level one run coach. Let us be your coaches as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Are you tired of feeling stuck in your weight loss journey? Do you find it difficult to know if you're training effectively? Are you frustrated with the slow pace of progress? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then it's time to take action with 40 Plus Fitness Online Personal Training. You'll have personalized nutrition and training plans designed to address your unique needs and help you achieve your fitness and weight loss goals. 40 Plus Fitness Online Personal Training offers the ultimate convenience allowing you to train when and where you want to, and basically have a coach in your pocket for guidance, support, and accountability. No more wasting time on ineffective workouts or diets that don't work. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you by scheduling a free discovery call with me at 40plusfitness.com forward slash discovery. On this call, we'll discuss your unique needs and how you can get the results you want and deserve. And best of all, you'll leave this discovery call with a plan of action. So what are you waiting for? Book your free discovery call with me today by going to 40plusfitness.com forward slash discovery. Results start with this click, 40plusfitness.com forward slash discovery. Hey, Raz, how you doing? Good, Alan. How are you today? Well, it's been kind of a rough week. We had to say goodbye to Angel her uh, nerve issues in her back, and then the hip dysplasia, uh, she pretty much declined pretty quickly and mm-hmm. was not able to walk on her own, uh, couldn't stand up on her own. So, you know, oh. we would stand her up and sometimes she could move around a little bit. She was so hobbled and you could just see it on her face how um, miserable she was wow. uh, about the fact that she couldn't, you know, get out and do things and seeing Buster go off and run around and and do his thing. And mama's going to walk Buster and daddy's going to walk Angel. Uh, mm-hmm. She wanted to be with them. You know, that's what they did. They go for their mm-hmm. walks together. And it just got to a point where she couldn't. And she knew it. And she was starting to see, you could see it on her face that she just was not where she needed to be and mm-hmm. laying around all day long. It was causing other health issues for her. So um, we had to help her um, pass on. Yeah. Um, first time I've ever had to dig a grave for a pet. Oh, wow. Well, I can say it's a pretty good workout. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> especially when you have to dig through two and a half uh, feet of clay. Oh, um, but, you know, so I was a little sore for a couple of days after that. Not just sore outside, but sore all the way sure. through. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, so it was it was a tough week. But, um, you know, we're recovering and, and with mourning and mm-hmm. moving on. I'm so sorry. So sorry for your loss. It's it is hard to lose a a loved pet. You know, someone's been in your family for so long. It's just it's I'm sure the house has been a little bit quiet this week without her there. And and my heart goes out to you. Well, Buster, Buster's making sure that we stay entertained. So good. (laughs) He's he's a good dog. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. How are things up there? 
Good. We have spring, at least today. It's spring. <laughs> Yay. You know, the weather's been great. And I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I was tapering for my big race, which last week I ran my big race. And now I'm in a reverse taper. I'm just taking my time getting back to running, which is wonderful now that the weather's turning. It's really easy just to go out there on a beautiful day like today and just get a mile or two in. I'm just taking my time and enjoying the run and the weather until I feel strong enough to get a few extra miles in at a time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that run. I know you got a Thank PR you. and all that. I and did. Yeah. Now, now you got to do the recovery, right? That's right. Yep. Taking my time. All right. Well, are you ready to talk to uh, Tom Hine? Sure. Our guest today is the founder of Capital Wealth Management in Connecticut with over 30 years of experience in the financial services industry. He is a chairman-level advisor at Commonwealth Financial Network, the country's largest privately held broker-dealer. His wealth management journey started after receiving his MBA from the University of Connecticut in 1986. He is a fourth-degree black belt in Shokatan Karate. He has been practicing his craft for more than 35 years and studied primarily under the renowned sensei Masataka Mori, he has also attended many summer camps taught or led by Sensei Hidetaka Mishayama and Sensei Kinosuka Ionata. <laughs> With no further ado, here's Thomas Hine. Tom, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you, Alan. Welcome, and uh, I'm glad to be here with you and your audience. The book is called The Balanced Wealth Approach, Secrets to Living Long and Living Rich. And I think, you know, as, as I was growing up, uh, you know, in college and everything, I went to college for accounting, became a CPA, uh, worked in that. And it was always the thing of, you know, you don't want to outlive your money. Most of us today don't actually have that problem. We have the other problem of not living long enough to enjoy our money. And so that's kind of what this book talks about is finding that balance of saying, OK, build wealth so that you have what you need when you're older, but at the same time, build health. So you're actually able to enjoy those years. It was always kind of a, I guess, a, a trope, if you will, where people would live, you know, they'd work to 65, they would retire and die at 67. And I think now with, uh, with longevity happening the way it is, better medical care to keep us alive, not necessarily keep us healthy, we're living longer. And, you know, again, from someone from the financial planning, you're basically probably telling your clients, you can't, you can't expect to die at 67, like, you know, people did 40 years ago, you've got to expect to live to 90 or 100 and you want your money to last that long, but you want to be able to enjoy those years as well. Correct. Yeah. It's about values clarification. We like to say, you know, I like to say this, these markets will heal, you know, recessions come and go, but when your money recovers, will you be there to enjoy it? And there's a big talk today, as you know, about lifespan versus health span, right? It's how long you live, but how long do you live healthy? And one of my messages to, to my clients and your audience is you really want your health span to equal your lifespan, right? We don't want the last 10 or 15 years to be hooked to tubes and running from doctor to doctor. Not to say that doctors don't help us, but like you've said so many other podcasts, we want to be proactive. We want to you know, be CEO of our own health so that we try to do the best we can before the doctors have to intervene you know, with more severe measures. So yeah, I'd love to have people balance it. And also more importantly, if you look at longevity and what's going on today, I heard on one of your other podcasts about uh, Alzheimer's is type three diabetes, right? We talked about the MCT oil. We know so many more things today than 10 years ago that those of us can take advantage of, or at least bounce those ideas off our physicians and medical people to say, is this something I should consider for my own longevity? Yeah, now I was I was having a conversation with uh, Raz, who is my co-host. We have some conversations around these, and when I when I said this next statement, she, I, I got a visceral response from her, which I, I think is actually brilliant. <laughs> it's a seven-figure portfolio doesn't really matter if you're six foot under, but you said it a little yes. differently in the book. But it's that concept of, okay, you you did this great thing, you built this great portfolio. There's your big chip stack, and then you're out of the game. And the concept I wanted to take out of that was, okay, if you were running a, a seven-figure business, you would want to run it well, meaning that the business is operating well, it's a healthy balance sheet, 
in addition to a healthy business, you know, so your relationships with everything and everybody you work with. And so the concept you brought up in the book was being the CEO of your own health. Could you jump into that concept a little bit? Because uh, I've talked about being an advocate before, but I think the way you put it was, was really, really on point. Yeah, thank you. And I will. And one of the famous quotes that jumps out to me from doing the research was, and you'll appreciate this, is, you know, a healthy man has a thousand dreams, but a sick man only has one. Right. So the idea is while you're building this uh, seven figure portfolio or business, we like to say, and doctors have shared this with me, there's what we call acceptable level of optimization. There's an acceptable level and there's an optimized level. So if you think about it from a business standpoint, you could have the auditors look over your books and records and cash flow and say, hey, things are going well, but these are the things you want to do to optimize, right? Your company, whether it's RD, tax credits from my end, it's helping clients save money, you know, convert to a Roth IRA, whatever it is in the financial planning end. When you make that parallel to health and wellness about being CEO of your own health, it's don't just go once a year to your own primary care. That's a great starting point. But add those extra measures that you would learn from podcasters like yourself. Be proactive. Why? Because we know that diet, sleep, exercise, and stress reduction, those are some of the key pillars that every doctor will tell you we have to manage better. And then you add into that, what are people doing on a daily basis? I wear my aura ring all the time. That's one of the things I talk about. Actually, I'm actually wearing the whoops wrap too. I'm trying to compare one versus the other because they have different metrics. And then in addition to that, What can you do with diet, sleep, exercise? We have a lot more control, as you know, Alan, over what we eat today, right? How we exercise. I just attended a great seminar on grounding and red light therapy and EMF. I mean, that's a whole nother generation of research, but we know so much more how to take care of ourselves. And yet some of us get so busy, we actually don't tend to the store. And so that's what I want to remind uh, the listener is you actually have a lot more control today over what you eat, how you sleep, how you track it, and then don't let yourself get so busy building that mega company that you neglect your own health and end up spending all that money to recuperate the very health that you were trying to preserve. Yeah, you know, I you may not know a lot about my story, but I had made it up to C-suite at 39 years old as a top auditor of the company, had every all the trappings of success, you know, I had the money, uh, the stock options, the, you know, yeah. the restricted stock, the 401k, you know, all of it. And I'm going through this process of realizing I'm I'm completely miserable and unhealthy. I spent eight years trying to find balance in all of this. And it, it finally came about, it finally came about when I was, I, I was willing to do some of the things you talked about in the book, about your own story, about how I flipped it and said, I've got to spend more time on my health. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, for me, it was it was diet and exercise. And then once I kind of got that that built up, then it was, okay, next thing is sleep. And I kind of got that zeroed in. But I felt as long as I was a C-suite executive of a large company, you know, Standard Poor's 500, I was never going to hit that fourth pillar of stress management. So by good fortune <laughs> or bad fortune, however you want to look at it, yep. I got laid off. Right. And and I made I made the decision at that point to not go back into corporate because I said, you know, this fourth pillar of my health is more important than me adding more to my wealth. And so in a sense, I did my scorecard and I began to weigh the health side a lot more than the wealth side. And congratulations, Alan, you're exactly right. And the challenge we all have, I just had it happen to a client six months ago. They had saved up all their money without getting the details and uh, the spouse doing a review and dies of a heart attack. And now the spouse has all this money and no one to enjoy it with. Other, you know, the grandkids, it's nice, but not her spouse. And so you're right. But here's the thing. It's often tough, as I said in the book, you know, mine was in the go-go 1980s when they told me to quit martial arts and burn the midnight oil. And I said, I, luckily for me, I can't do that. It would be against the grain and against my values clarification. But it took that moment for me to realize I had to go left or I had to go right. And like you, I said, I'm going to take the turn that enriches and nourishes me. Looking back, I never regret a day. In fact, many of my peers 
did work themselves ultimately either to an early grave or more importantly to unhappiness. And at the end, um, that wasn't the journey they would have wanted either. So congratulations to you on that. Well, it, it took me a couple more decades than it took you to to draw that conclusion. But uh, I, I did I did eventually get there. But you have a tool uh, that you uh, put in your book. It's called the Bal- Balanced Wealth Scorecard. And I know you now use this with your clients that you're, you know, counseling or, or, or advising on their uh, wealth strategies but you're having this additional conversation with them of, you know, what else about your health? How how are you going to live well and retire well? Can you talk about your balanced your balanced wealth scorecard? Not so much. I mean, we can talk about the financial side a little bit just so they know what's in it. Um, but right. obviously, this is a health and fitness podcast, so I'm not going to give them financial advice on this show other than they might want to reach out to you if they've got some money they need to manage. But right. beyond that, <laughs> uh, can you talk about your balanced wealth scorecard and how how that's used? Yeah, thank you, Alan. And it's a joy for me because the scorecard, um, and first of all, my disclaimer, I always tell even, even my clients that know me, I say, you know, I'm not a doctor. I play one on TV and they laugh. But nothing is proprietary. Nothing violates HIPAA. They're not sharing any medical information. The scorecard is subjective. So the input comes from, you know, the user or the client. What I like to do is ask them, there's four topics on finance, which we don't really have to get into in detail, but the other four are on health, right? Hence the term balance. What I ask them is, if you were looking back over three years from now, one year from now, five years, looking back, what would you like to achieve in that space You know, that would put you further along the line of health and wellness? And a lot of times, the first thing is, nobody's ever asked me that you know, from a financial planning end. But what I just got an email yesterday from a client out in the Midwest, which I love, this client said, I finally got why you kept asking me about an aura ring, you know, which she finally ordered one. She said, I understand now why. I said, I don't get any benefit, but it may help you in your journey on tracking exercise and sleep. So the scorecard is designed to have them input on a score of, let's say, zero to eight or 12 on a scale on where they feel they fall. Obviously, the lower numbers mean they've not spent much time thinking about diet, sleep, exercise. The higher numbers mean, yeah, I've spent some time, but I haven't systematized it. And you and I know, based on all your great work, too, on podcasts, once you create a system, it's easier to follow it, and then you can always insert something new. And so typically about twice a year, at the end of a regular review of their portfolio or their tax situation, I'll say, let's take out that scorecard. And what would you, I asked them, what would you like to talk about next? One client recently got rated on his life insurance because his A1C is too high. So I said, okay, great. You know, what's your primary care telling you? And then what are his next steps so that he knows as a reminder, I'm there to coach him on, to encourage him on that step if he wants to share that. So we typically use it as an accountability partner. And then for those people, Alan, that really want to do a deep dive, Obviously, I have doctors that I've worked with that I can always refer them to. There's no finder's fees. They can go right to these doctors and inquire. And like many of your great podcasts, these people are experts in a deep dive, uh, whether it's you know Alzheimer's, brain research, Parkinson's, I mean, you name it. They've all done their homework and they've got peer-reviewed work in that area. But that's if somebody you know, needs to do a deep dive more than the traditional. So it's an accountability partner. We like to review it. And more importantly, I love it when the spouses or their partner weighs in because I like it to be where it can be a couple's thing. And as you know, when couples are both on the same page, the goals, the odds of reaching a goal are multiplied when you've got someone there cheering you on. So that's a big part of it, too. Yeah. Well, beyond cheering you on, it's the whole concept of, okay, if uh, if this is a lady and her husband doesn't want to eat the foods that she's eating and she's trying to commit to increasing or improving herself in this area, she's going to need his support at some level. Otherwise, it's going to be a struggle. And it's not that he has to eat the way that she's eating, but at least at that point, if he's on board to help her reach these goals, and understands that these are important to her, which includes she has to communicate these things to him. If mm-hmm. you're doing that, if you're doing that, if you're communicating this, look, I've done this scorecard, and these are the things that are now kind of my priorities. They're my values. They're what I want to be. You can take that scorecard to your doctor. You can take that scorecard to your spouse or significant other. You can even share that because most of us are in our 40s. Our kids are going to be old enough 
of 40s and 50s, our kids are going to be old enough to understand that we want to be healthy and be there for eventually their kids. And exactly. so having those conversations, this is a really good tool to like say, okay, I want to be financially secure. I want to be healthy. And so these are my priorities going into this next quarter, next year, however we want to approach it. But that gives you a great tool. And you mentioned something else that I think is really important is, you know, I don't like to talk bad about doctors. So I'm not talking bad about doctors. Please don't yep. hit me up and say, you're not listening to your doctor. Well, look, look, there there are doctors that are in the current process that follow standard of care. They know the basics. They had the education that was necessary for them to be a doctor and do what they do, which is great. There are other doctors and very, very smart people who are on the other side of this and look at this more from a well care perspective. And they've raised the bar well above the sick care that most of our doctors currently have to practice. Yep. And so there are people out there, there are these experts, if you will, in in the way that you can deal with nutrition. There's experts in the way that you can deal with supplementation. There are tests that you can do that that only these doctors are going to do because your doctor isn't going to necessarily say just because your A1C is high, we should do a genome test so we understand if there's some genetic predispositions for that or right. whether this is just something that's based on the fact that you're eating McDonald's every day and should just cut it out. Your doctor's just going to say, eat better. And that's about all they're going to say. And, right. and then you got to figure that out. And then again, I'm a, I'm a nutrition coach. I'm a fitness coach. And so there's people like me just as, I mean, I know, I know what an ETF is. I know what stock is. I know what bonds are. I know about, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, diversification. Right. I even know a lot about cryptocurrency and all those other things. Now, a lot of people don't. So they come to someone like you, who's an expert to get advice so that they can optimize so that they can do better than they could do on their own. Can you talk about how someone should go about picking an expert, knowing it, finding an expert, picking an expert and, and then working with one? Yeah, thank you. And also I'll give the analogy, which you'll certainly appreciate in health and wellness, just as I say in the book, when you diversify your portfolio, you know, stocks, bonds, cash, real estate, I also mentioned diversify your health care, right? If you've been a good saver, Maybe you don't just have primary care. Maybe you have a massage therapist or I say a chiropractor approved by an orthopedic surgeon. You know, maybe you have these other people in the background because we know that there are many different experts that can weigh in and you don't have to have, you know, pay a king's ransom for all this. I mean, a lot of these great health practitioners aren't always at the very highest end, but they have really great knowledge. But to answer the question, we believe the basis of everything should be a a financial plan, right? Just the way that chatbot, GPT, and open AI have taken the world by storm, a financial planning software that's robust literally incorporates long-term care, Social Security, Medicaid planning, estate planning, Roth IRA conversion, all the things that are important. And I often tell clients, 10 years ago, the software wasn't that advanced to what they call in fintech. Well, now we literally get updates from the companies every week on we've changed this module because Secure Act 2.0 was passed last December, right? Or we've changed it. So number one, the basis of everything should be a financial plan. Number two, and that's easy to do, but the second thing is the plan should be reviewed a couple times a year, right? When life conditions change. And that's where we add that balanced wealth questionnaire at the end, or what do they want to do on that? But the third thing to remember is along the way, the government is really forcing people through this Secure Act 2.0 they want people to take more money out and get taxed now because we know the government sadly is broke, right? The deficits, and I'm not blaming one party over the other, they both contributed to it. So our government is gonna be reaching into your pocket, Alan, and your listeners and my pocket. Not that we don't wanna help the government to protect us and there's some good things the government can do, but there's also some inefficiencies, right? And I tell my clients, if you don't do the right tax and financial planning, you're volunteering to give more money to the government rather than doing the right amount you know, for your fair share. So financial plan, a review on top of that. And ultimately, even though people are in their 40s and 50s and relatively young, I still want them to get a will, you know, durable power of attorney. I've had too many stories, and I know you probably have known people who died unexpectedly, and all of a sudden their spouse or their kids are left with a situation where 
you got to go through probate, which is basically salt in the wound of that. So we believe that's part of a traditional financial plan as well. Yeah, well, I I live in Panama, a country uh, on an island. So yeah, when when people pass here, it's a uh, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> let's just right. say it's, it's fun. And so one of the things you know I wanted to bring up because you are you are a um, you are a financial planner and uh, coach, but the health savings accounts. Yeah. You know, and what I think what a lot of people think is, well, this is this is when I go to my doctor and I have to pay the deductible. I can use that against my health savings account. If he gives me a prescription and I have to pay for part of that, that goes against that. Certain other things that I would buy for my health uh, would be in that. But what about things like coaches and nutritionists and and things like that? Those are included in that whole model as well, aren't they? They are. And the key, the key thing about it, I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of people don't know they've got, I'll never say free money, but money set aside for coaches and people like that. Absolutely, it's allowed. And I suspect even more, this is where people really want to get in the nitty gritty of their planning. If you're smart about your own 401k, and and we can't get into details here, but what they call Roth conversions and all, you can generate tax-free money in retirement that can also be used to pay for these services. So a lot of people, if you're listening and you're over the age of 60, you might think it's too late. No, it's not necessarily too late. In your 40s and 50s and still adding, the HSA accounts are absolutely one way to do it, yeah. to allocate to that. It's a smart move. Because I, I had a client, I had a client and she's like, I need you to do these, jump through these little hoops for me uh, and I can claim this on my HSA. And I was like, cool. <laughs> you know, and it saves her, saves her some tax money too. Yeah. And I would also share, Alan, although I'm, I'm not a tax expert, but this is something for your audience because A lot of times, a little bit of research goes a long way. One of the reasons why I enjoyed writing the book for my current and future clients is I am, and my accountant blessed, I'm able to expense, you know, this healthcare R&D research because it's not just about me. It is for the benefit of my current and future clients. So I cleared it with him before the book even got published. And he said, it's your line of business. So for your audience, if people love what you do and others, and you can make it part of your business and integrate it then you have the ability to ethically and legally deduct these expenses as part of R&D and all, whether it's for you or your training clients, your coaching clients. That's certainly within the purview of what's allowable you know, under the IRS law. Tom, I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? So the three that I like to focus on, and the big one uh, is sleep, right? There's no question. Every book's been written about it. There's some great ones about sleep. And again, whether you use your Apple Watch, I like to use the Aura Ring. I have no investments in these companies. I'm just sharing what works. But I love to be able to track the deep sleep, the REM sleep, your HRV, all these critical aspects of it. And if you don't know all the details, there's plenty of websites. I know some of your podcasts have covered that. So number one, and I just listened to, by the way, a very well-known military expert give a talk on another another webinar and they asked him regarding all of the challenges you know in school violence and all that stuff like what's the one thing people can do to take advantage of being alert and responsive and healthy every day and this is a military person he said sleep sleep is the thing that people really need to focus on so that thought that was fascinating coming from a lieutenant colonel the second thing clearly i would add and I've done more of this work out in the last month is this idea of circadian rhythm, right? Sunlight, grounding. The fact is a lot of the way we evolved over 10,000 years and more was a lot of our artificial light today. You know, we're in buildings a lot. The research has clearly shown that if we get back to nature and where you are is a perfect place to get back to nature, <laughs> right? But, and they said the blue zones, a lot of people in the blue zones around the world, and guess what? Outside near the beach, near the ocean, near the sand. So I think a second one is just be mindful of how many hours you spend indoors versus the natural sunlight and the circadian rhythm. I'm learning a lot more about that for me. So when I have my travels, and I think the third thing is for me, it's been, again, I'm not a nutritionist like you, but clearly the keto diet has been, I didn't come into my program a lot of overweight, but I dropped a lot of weight doing the fasting and keto diet And I realized I could live on a lot less calories and have the energy. The key thing is, as you know, is training your body to burn to that glucose before you get to the ketosis stage. And a lot of people 
never can get over that hump because there's social challenges. I'm sure you know this. Friends and family and people stop in and you're like, you can't tell everyone that you're fasting all the time, right? Because you got to eat meals. But I found that if you can work around that, those are the three things that have helped me now. A year from now, I may change them up a bit, but those are the three that I found that keep me on a mindset of health and wellness, and more importantly, allow me to be CEO of my own health and not sit there and be frustrated by schedule changes, airline delays, or whatever's going on in the world. Well, Tom, the book is called The Balanced Wealth Approach, Secrets to Living Long and Living Rich. If someone wanted to learn more about the book, more about you and what you're doing, where would you like for me to send them? Thank you. Yeah, it's thebalancedwealthapproach.com. It's literally the title of the book.com, and they can learn about the book. There's a questionnaire there, a scorecard they can fill in, and then that can begin their journey. As we like to say, we can bring you to the door of health and wellness. You know, we can open the door, but they have to walk through that door. And the great work that you've done, listen to people and the experts that you have on, and I'll continue to gather information from my clients because I think this is just the first inning of what's going to be a great long-term run for, for all of us. Great. Well, you can find that episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 587. Tom, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you, Alan. And thank you very much for sharing some time with me. I enjoyed it immensely. Welcome back, Russ. Hey, Alan. You know, this is a topic that we've talked about a little bit lately. It's it's so important to, just like Tom said, be the CEO of your own health. I mean, when you prepare for retirement, uh, there's more to retirement than just having enough money to live on. You need to have the health uh, mm -hmm. to take you through those retirement years. Yeah, that whole live part. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's pretty key. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I think a lot of people look at retirement, you know, and they're like, okay, did I save enough money to last? And, you know, how long am I going to mm -hmm. be here? And and so it's nothing, we we did it, we started it years ago, probably most of us uh, put a little bit away in your 401k, mm -hmm. do a little bit here, do a little bit there. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. as you start getting into your 40s and 50s, you really start thinking about socking away a little bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. pushing up that amount so that you're kind of building this portfolio. But so few people think about their health and fitness in a similar light of oh, yeah. what am I investing today for my health and fitness? Oh, gosh. Um, and it's time, yeah. it's effort, mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. money when you need that assistance and accountability. Mm -hmm. And so few people are doing it. They're sort of just coasting along and it's mm -hmm. like, ho oh, hum, you know, and it's sort of like the, I, I guess I'm going to work for the rest of my life kind of mindset, <laughs> but yeah. that won't be nearly as long as you think if you're not mm -hmm. taking care of your health and fitness. Oh, that's so true. You know, just to play devil's advocate here, I can tell you that in my 20s, I was also focused on my career and didn't have to think too much about my health. In my 30s, when I was having kids and raising young young children, you know, my time and attention was focused on them. And my husband, Mike, was focused on his career. So it's like years tick by before we really even needed to think too hard about our health, you know, and then uh, you know, before it's too late, you know, it's, you know, you want to get into that. Yeah. It's just important to maintain that focus. And it's better in your younger years. <laughs> it's easier to start a running regimen or a weightlifting regimen or any sort of program when you're younger and healthier and you can bounce back faster. It, it is easier to be fit and stay fit. So maintenance mm -hmm. is an easier way than starting later in life. But the sure. point being is you can't. You know, yes. it's the whole point is yes. like, you you know, they'll tell you it's like, you know, don't think you've lost it. You can still be putting money away for your retirement mm -hmm. uh, now, whatever you can. And it's sort of the same thing with fitness. It's like True. do what you can with what you have right now, because every little thing you do, every little investment chips away and puts a little bit in that bank mm -hmm. to make you healthier and make you more fit. And so as you start looking at not just how you want to live that other part of your life, the second half mm -hmm. or the, the rest of it, however you want to line that up. Basically, what quality of life do you want to have? Right. What do you want to do and enjoy? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've talked about my grandfather, uh, 80 years old, had to quit playing golf because he couldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he kept living. You know, he kept living and he lost the most important thing in his life, which was golf. Mm-hmm. And he lost it. And he lived for another 15 years. Mm-hmm. And and so as you kind of look at this and say, I want the life mm-hmm. and I want my retirement money to last as long as I live. But you should also mm-hmm. want your health span to last as long as you live. Oh, um, gosh, yeah. Because I, yep. I can't I can't even imagine, <laughs> you know, sitting there and, and withering away. Oh, yeah. As an older, frail person losing mm-hmm. independence. You know, mm-hmm. looking at that jar of pickles I bought that I can't open and, oh, geez. <laughs> and, and waiting, you know, for someone to come by and open it for me, um, mm-hmm. not being able to take care of myself. I can't, you know, I can't even imagine spending years, potentially years and years of my life in mm-hmm. that state. But if you're mm-hmm. not doing something today, you're setting yourself up for stuff just like that. Oh, for sure. You know, it's so easy to get busy and focused on our careers and, but what's going to happen when you don't work anymore, when you actually quit, quit work to be retired and you've got all this time on your hands and what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, well, we're, you know, we're going to, we're going to go to, we're going to go to the Mediterranean and do these hikes and we're going to go, you know, to Michi Pichu and do that Ooh. thing. And we're going to, we're mm-hmm. going to do all those things. Right. But then we're not doing anything now. So it's like you get to 65 and it's like, wow, I can't walk up the stairs without getting winded. There's no right. way, you know, and then, yeah, you go on that cruise, but leaving the cruise ship, someone's got to drive me to the top of the volcano because oh, I can't, gosh. I can't walk there. And, mm-hmm. you know, so now it's not the same experience. It's mm-hmm. not the same as what you thought. And it Mm -hmm. just becomes harder and harder because you're just not doing the things necessary to be ready for those. So if there's something about your retirement that excites you, start working on it right now. Yeah, You know, it's the whole thing. It's like, yeah, I'd love to do these cruises and do this thing. Well, you got to save the money for it, right? Well, this Mm -hmm. is the same way. You've got to build your stamina and your energy and your strength to be Mm -hmm. able to do those things and enjoy the life that you are meant to enjoy. You worked hard. You worked hard your whole life to save for that retirement. And Mm -hmm. as you said, you know, seven-figure portfolio and you're six feet under um, is not the plan. No. Uh, so you got to start doing things on both sides. But, you know, For health sure. and fitness is probably an area where most of us, many of us might have be falling short. Mm-hmm. We're probably saving plenty of money in our 40s and 50s because we know it's coming. And we mm-hmm. get a little bit behind the curve on this stuff, but we're doing it. And this right. is the same way. Start investing the time and the effort and in some cases money to get mm-hmm. where you want to be. Yep, for sure. That sounds great. All right. Well, Raz, I will talk to you next week. Great. Take care, Alan. You too. Thank you. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Jillian Loktich and discuss her book, Growing Older, Living Younger, The Science of Aging Gracefully and the Art of Retiring Comfortably. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.